Have you ever been in a season in your life where you were waiting on God to manifest his, his presence and his promises? Well, today's guest knows exactly where you're living. Alicia Lewis has written a book called Kingdom Building in the Meantime. And today on Babby's House, she'll share her insights on what it means to wait on God. I'm Babby Mason, and this is Babby's House. It's coming up right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Babby Mason, and this is Babby's House. Thanks for joining me today. I really do believe that today's show is going to be a great source of encouragement to you because I think all of us have, have been in a season where we were waiting on God, and maybe you're, maybe you're in a lean time. Well, my... My guest today, Alicia Lewis, has written a book called In the Meantime. Sometimes the times can be pretty mean while you're waiting on God to show up. But you know what? Even though you don't see him, you have to know that he is behind the scenes working things out together for your good. And my guest is Alicia Lewis, and she's written a book called Kingdom Building In the Meantime. You're going to hear her insights on what it means to wait on God to manifest his, his promises. And while we're waiting, I want to encourage you with these words to a great song called Love Like That. I hope you'll be encouraged. What would it mean to that single mom to get some money in the mail? Or pay a visit to Mr. Jones, whose health has begun to fail, just to shine a little light? Tell him it will be all to bless somebody's day. Teach me to love like that. Tell me what to say to help my neighbor. Teach me to love like that. Show me what to do to make things better. Maybe it's to feel a need or plant a seed. Or give where there is a lack. I want to be like you, Lord. Teach me to love like that. Taking him to lunch, or maybe it's to babysit for that mama do a time crunch. Oh, you just never know how you can touch some weary soul. Teach me to love like that. Tell me what to say to help my name. Teach me to love like that. Teach me love. Maybe I could feel a need, or maybe I could plant a seed, or give where there is a light. I want to be like you, Lord. Teach me to love.
Welcome back to Babby's House. I'm so honored today to have on Babby's House author Alicia Lewis. She's written a book called Kingdom Building in the Meantime. And Alicia knows what it's like to be in that season where you are waiting on God, living in the meantime. Well, welcome to Babby's House, my friend. So good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Babby, for Thank having you for me. Being here. Excellent. You know, immediately uh, when I read the title, mm -hmm. Alicia, uh, immediately I began to identify mm -hmm. because there have been some seasons in my own life mm -hmm. where you're waiting, you're kind of waiting on what God is going to do next, wondering how he's going to answer that prayer. But in the meantime, he gives you promises to stand on. Exactly. So in your own for out of your own personal experiences, you've written this book. It's a devotional. It is. Called Built Kingdom Building in the Meantime. Well, what inspired you to write this book? The Lord himself. I heard that. Actually, <laughs> I attended a conference where a prophetess from the Detroit, Michigan area was present, mm -hmm. and she spoke to me a four-minute message. In wow. the very beginning, she mentioned the book and how I was his scribe and I would write a book. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, she shared a whole bunch of other things that came to pass, and I totally forgot the portion about the book until I was poked and prodded by others to write, to contribute writings for others' books and things of that nature. And I just sat down one day after receiving a phone call from a friend who called me to say, Alicia, you ought to write a devotional. Mm. And um, I just got to doing it. And that's yes. how it came about. You know, I, I believe that everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And that story is worth telling. Mm -hmm. And so many of us, you know, need to be writing our stories down. And you are one of those who has seized that moment yes, and heard from God to write your story down. Yes. So I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. So will you give me some, and our, and our uh, viewers, an example of what it means to wait on God in the meantime and what that means to you? Oh, sure. It's really expectantly waiting as opposed to being doubtful, being mm -hmm. fearful, and just lack of faith. Um, it's just based on my own experiences. He said some things with me and I let them languish and pass because I was fearful, I was doubtful. And so just based on past experiences and lessons to say, okay, my answer is no longer, well, maybe, I'm not certain, it's yes. Okay, sure, but just a posture of prayer, just a posture of worship, just a posture of just really intently listening to him and allowing him to work things out and to orchestrate things mm -hmm. in the wait yes. and realizing, as you had mentioned in the open, he gives us instructions, things to do in that meantime. So for me, I don't think I was quite aware that I was in the season. Um, I was just trying to be as obedient as possible just from realizing the missteps I had had in the past. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to the next. And so I heard him very clearly in terms of his promise for me. And I believe that each test and assignment that he gives us is meant as preparation for that ultimate blessing, that ultimate promise. So that's why I said we are meant to build kingdom, his kingdom, in the meantime. Yes, that's, that's good. So in other words, we wait on God with a purpose. Yes. Our waiting has a purpose. Oh, yes. And um, can you give us a, a, a specific incident or, or a a specific um, story, sure. a backstory maybe, sure. of how you're walking this out? Oh, sure. Um, so I moved to Washington, D.C. about 13 years ago. And from there, you know, I've raised someone else's child who is now my son the last 10 years. It's mm. just opportunity to do and to sow. I've yes. um, operated in ministry. I've taken this leap to write this book. I've dumped debt. I've repaired relationships that needed to have been repaired, but not realizing that these were hindrances, some of them, that needed to be resolved before I can actually reach that manifestation of his promise. And I think a lot of times when we're waiting on God, we don't realize that there are some things that we need to do in the meantime, that if he promises X, X isn't necessarily going to come just out of nowhere without us preparing and doing some mm. things to arrive at X. And so for me, the promise is marriage. And so I believe I needed to dump debt. I believe I needed to learn how to forgive and repair and mend relationships and also to take a man child into my own home and raise him in preparation for this ultimate promise that the Lord has made me. That's powerful. So in the waiting, you're getting ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> you're getting oh, yes. ready for the whatever's coming. Oh, yes. And can you give our, our, our viewers some insight mm -hmm. on how to get ready? Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes we're, we're taking the, 
the defensive or we are so busy looking at the stuff that's going wrong right. and not looking at what's going right, right. or what or anticipating what God's going to do next right. or how we can better ourselves or right. prepare ourselves for what God is going to do next. So can you help our viewer uh, get ready? What do we sure. have to do? Sure. For me, I love and like to be introspective. So I take time in the devotional. I provide an opportunity for folks to be still and be open. Just to be still before the Lord, get in the word, read it aloud, it to cleanse you and to cleanse your heart and be open. Sharing with him very transparently what the issues are in your life and allowing him to speak back. I think a lot of times we just go and we go and we lodge complaints at his feet and we talk about our feelings without necessarily taking a moment to have a woosa so then he can speak and then reflecting upon what he's saying and then getting into that posture of okay lord you're right based on experiences where i may have tripped up and may i may have fallen and from that i'm going to learn and just do as opposed to you know not um and i think it just came from the book a lot of travailing came from a lot of crying it came from a lot of missed opportunities missteps hurt but just realizing that he is truly our provider and he heals and he is gracious and he loves us he loves me and realizing that he is taking care of every need thus far yes. so I'm certain that he's going to do what he needs to do through this message not from me but from what he has asked me to do I see it and didn't realize it in hindsight that this was really a delivering opportunity a time for deliverance for me from fear from doubt for a number of different things and so so I see it as an opportunity to inspire others in their own weight, in their own meantime seasons, to get busy and to allow him to show himself mighty and strong in their situations. You know, Alicia, just a moment ago, you you put your, you laid your finger on something that's very powerful. Right. Sometimes we stand in the way of our own blessing. Oh, sure. We stand in the way of, sometimes we are the culprit in blocking our own blessing. Oh, sure. Have there been uh, seasons or or a, p a particular incident that happened in your life where you stood in the in the way of God's blessings? Oh, sure. So the Lord said to me once before, Alicia, you will wed. And so the word speaks to us having visions and dreams. And so I do have visions and I am a dreamer. And so a few years back, he had showed me a vision of where I was to marry a specific person. And in my mind, I was just like, mm, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> and so he allowed it to come to pass almost but then I said I'm doubtful you know I don't really know if this is it I'm not sure if he's the one he's not as mature as I would like him to be he doesn't you know we run through these lists as young women and maybe older women of you know this list and he doesn't meet X Y and Z and so I've missed out because I truly know the Lord said this is what is to occur he spoke mm. to me several times throughout that process and so the gentleman is now wed to someone else and it's okay I bless him and his wife but I'm still waiting and standing strong on God's word for me because he has spoken it again and so just based on that own experience of me standing in my way, not believing, moving out of God's timing and everything else, I've resolved to build kingdom in my meantime, say yes when my spirit or flesh wants to say no, and just being, you know, patient, yes. but actively yes. patient in yes. my wait. So how has that helped you to grow? You know, God always, you know, things in, in, the, in every believer's life, right. they happen for a reason. Yeah. And God may not have caused it, but he can certainly use it. Oh, sure. So how, how in this particular incident, in this particular occasion, sure. how did uh, you grow in, mm -hmm. from that? Testimony. I think, again, I mentioned the season of crying, the season of saying, okay, Lord, I believe you. I saw the misstep. I hear what you were saying, and I need to really take you at your word, as opposed to doubting, as opposed to listening to others who really don't know what you know to be true mm -hmm. and what I know in my own spirit to be true. Mm -hmm. But I think that experience also, for me, uh, raised some things that I didn't realize I had held on to, from being raised by a single mom and my father not really being in my life. And so things that the young man would do kind of triggered things that my father would would do or say yes. and so hadn't been freed from that relationship and from those things to then move into this new relationship so I just learned that I needed to dump some stuff yeah I dump some stuff definitely in well, order to Alicia we're going to talk more about this after our break we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk more about kingdom building in the meantime a devotional for holding on to God's promises and what a powerful book and uh, we're, we're going to just kind of take a walk through some of those chapters and see how this can really impact your life and encourage you. So after this break, we'll come back with more Babby's House and a great conversation with Alicia Lewis. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to Babby's House. I have the privilege today to speak with Alicia Lewis, and she is the author of Kingdom Building in the Meantime. And if you're a child of God, then you are a member of his forever kingdom. You are a child of God, and he loves you just as much as he loves his son. I love that promise from John 17, 23. And I'm so happy today to be speaking with Alicia Lewis, the author of this great book, and even the chapter titles just speak volumes, Alicia. I was looking at uh, chapter 11 that's talking about dumping some stuff. Yes, you, you know, your book um, is talking about those things in your own personal life that God has told you to do assignments that he's given you, yes. um, to, some things for you to do while you're waiting, yes. some assignments for you to accomplish while you're waiting. Yes. So what in your, in your own personal life do you mean by dump some stuff and how does that apply to those of us dump that are listening? Dump some stuff. I think really, again, it goes back to being very introspective and trying to realize once we come up against walls, well, what is that wall and what is it? Is it me? A lot of times it is us. It's the inner us, the inner me. And for me, dump some stuff was, you know, having to dump some fear, having to dump some issues that were present in my relationship with my parents, you know, realizing that they both were substance abusers. And so I kind of created a wall between my mother and I and our intimacy wasn't what it used to be. And so having to forgive. So just mm -hmm. a number of things that needed to be dumped in order for me to move forward and walk into what the Lord is promising. So when you... When you went through this process, let's let's say forgiveness. Uh, you mentioned that a moment ago, mm -hmm. and those issues that come up between uh, our family members, mm -hmm. and that's that's a huge that's a huge stuff to have to try to dump. Yes, it is. What was what was one of those big steps that you took? Because it, because your book is really filled with a lot of personal insights yes. and how tos. At the end of every chapter, you even give us some action steps to yes. take. So in that process, what what was one of the things that you did to unload? and to begin to walk towards forgiveness. Making phone calls, reading the word. I'll give one example that I speak to in the actual book. I happened to have been at Bible study one day and one of the pastors said, hey, I want us to study, you know, the love chapter, Corinthians 13, read it, take it home, you know, pour into it, get something out of it, come and teach and speak to what happened as a result. And as I read the word, I realized I wasn't loving the way that the Lord said we are to love. Mm. And what came to me was my own relationship with my mother, mm. knowing that she was my best friend, but based on experiences, our relationship had weakened. And so I realized I need to do something. I need to call her. I called my mother and just uh -huh. shared with her, you know, why our relationship wasn't what it used to be, how I love her, how the Lord seeks for her to be delivered in her substance abuse, and how he loves her, and how she could totally do it. She was strong enough, just speaking life into her based on what I realized the Lord had called and wanted me to do. And our relationship is better than ever. My mother is free. She is clean from substance substance abuse, narcotics, a lot of great things came as a result of dumping stuff. It's powerful. Yes. Powerful, Miss Alicia. Alicia is the author of Kingdom Building in the Meantime, and your book is very practical. Yes. Very practical. At the end of every chapter, you give us some action steps, yes. some questions to address, um, as you, you're, you're, you're the kind of person that likes to look inward. Yes. And so you're helping us to look inward, looking through our own stuff mm -hmm. and taking out what needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, and using those as prompts yes. um, from, the, from the Bible, some very powerful scriptures. In chapter 12, you talk about write a book. Yes. And you um, mentioned the importance of journaling. Yes. You're a journaler. I am. Uh, what are some of the benefits, your own personal benefits of journaling? Again, greater introspection, but then to jot things down and being able to reflect on them and to go back to them later because you get to then keep track of what God has done or how you've moved from A to B and how you didn't realize it. I've had situations where I may have been in a certain season. You know, I wasn't as joyful as I am now. And one day I looked up and I had joy. It was like, what just happened? Hmm. I was on my face crying like every night almost in secret, you know, for a year, just praying to God, asking him to deliver me from, to provide to do certain things and all of a sudden that's no longer the case and so just the result of journaling and just speaking to him and I know many of us know that we can pray inwardly we don't have to be so vocal when we share and we do devotions to the Lord but to me journaling is also an opportunity just to speak to him in a different way as it comes to me as opposed to having to be vocal but again I love to see him move in that way too it's just allowing me to purge as well and then to be able to reflect and go back on those chapters and things like oh my god he did this so I know he will do that Yes, you know, you, um, you touched on the fact that when you're journaling or when you don't journal, mm -hmm. you're in a situation and then two or three weeks later you find out that 
that there was a change, mm -hmm. but when you're journaling, you chronicle yes. how those changes occur. Yes. And you can look back on your life and you can actually see yes. how God moved. So it's very insightful yes. into your own walk and faith building mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. to look back and see how God answers prayer in your life. Um, I want to talk about those action steps. Okay. At the end of every chapter, you um, you give the, the reader some prompts on yes. some things to do. Yes. Um, what are some of those, what are some of those benefits of, of say, you know, we talked about journaling, but you also use the scriptures mm -hmm. as, um, as a source of, of encouragement. Mm -hmm. How important is that to you? So I realize that every believer isn't in the same place and everyone may not be the most world renowned preacher or prayer or, and I just think that a lot of times we don't realize what to do in the meantime. And so I just wanted to give really specific steps and devotions and prayers that would assist people. Because I think a lot of times we doubt our own selves and our own equipment mm -hmm. and our own ability. That's good. And so just giving prayers and hopefully you can prompt and read through and say, okay, I got it now. At the end, I also provide promise pages. So as you go through this and you journal and you're introspective and you answer the questions and you dump some stuff and you mend relationships, the Lord is probably speaking to you about promises you then need to make to him. I promise, Lord, that I will set aside a certain day and hour, you know, to be with you. I promise, Lord, that I will display you better. I promise, Lord, whatever it may be that he's revealing to you in that time. So I believe the exercises are great, not just for us, but building our faith, our walk, and ultimately our relationship with him. Very good. And you also close each chapter with a prayer, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, my guest today has been Alicia Lewis, the author of Kingdom Building in the Meantime. Thank you so very much. By the way, how can we get more information about the book? You can visit my website, which is www.aliciajlewis.com. You can also find me on Amazon or on Facebook, Kingdom Building in the Meantime. Very good. Well, thanks for coming to the show today. Thank you. And thank you very much, my dear viewer, for coming by Babby's house today. I really do hope and pray that today's conversation has been encouraging to you. I really do hope and pray that something has been said or even something has been sung today that has touched you in a place where you need it the most. Will you do me a favor and reach out to me while you're on the internet checking out information on Alicia's book? Will you drop by my website at babby.com and while you're there, you can check out all the things that we're doing, singing and speaking and writing books and Bible studies and our internet radio station at babbymasonradio.com. All those wonderful resources are there to encourage you in your walk with the Lord to build you up in your most holy faith. Will you let me know? Uh, reach out to me and email me while you're there on the site. Well, God bless you today. And remember, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.